Snippets are a way to dramatically improve your coding speed. When writing code, you'll find yourself using the same constructs and patterns, such as if statements and for loops, many times a day. With snippets, you can easily insert those patterns and then chain them with other commands. Cursorless has a built-in snippet engine that integrates deeply with its targeting system, enabling you to easily insert snippets anywhere on the screen, as well as wrapping existing code with those snippets, such as surrounding a statement with a try-catch block or an if statement. In today's video, we'll learn how to insert snippets, how to wrap code with snippets, see what snippets Cursorless ships with by default, and then show you how to easily create your own snippets using the Cursorless Snippet Recorder. Be sure you have an up-to-date version of Cursorless Talon because we recently enabled snippets by default before they were guarded by a tag that you had to enable. They're still considered experimental, but we have users who've been driving them for probably 18 months with no issue. Let's start by inserting a snippet. Snippet funk. Drowse. As you can see, Cursorless has inserted a function. Now, it knows we're in a Python file, so it inserted a Python function definition. One of the key features of a snippet is its tab stops or holes. In the case of a function, it can have a name, arguments, and a body. Let's start filling out our function snippet. Snake, hello world. Tab. Snake, my argument is type string. Tab. Funk print string hello. Drowse. As you can see, each time I each time I say tab, it moves to the next tab stop. Cursorless also allows you to insert snippets before, after, or over the top of existing structures. Let's insert a function after this one. Snippet funk after this. Snake another funk, tab twice, funk print, string whatever. Snippet funk before pit. Certain snippets, such as the function snippet, allow you to chain a phrase afterwards, which will automatically become a piece of that snippet. In this case, the name of the function. Snippet func, hello world. Drowse. So you can see in this case, it automatically snake case formatted it because we're in Python and inserted it into the name. Because that snippet hole has been filled out, it leaves us in the next one. This allows for easy chaining. Clear file. Snippet func hello world word whatever is type string next func print string hello. Drowse. Any snippet that can be used for insertion can also be used to wrap a target. So for example, the if statement snippet, snippet if after this, drowse. So that's what it looks like for insertion. Well, we can also use it for wrapping. If wrap this, drowse. And you can see it took the print statement that we're sitting in and wraps it with an if statement. Wrapper snippets are also great for chaining. If wrap this, bring air is equal string world. Drowse. So that covers the ways to use the built-in snippets. Let's have a look at how we can make our own snippets. To use a snippet with cursorless in Talon, you need to configure what the snippet looks like and then tell Talon how you want to say the snippet. Let's look at the snippet definition itself first. The first thing you have to do is tell Cursorless where you want to keep your custom snippets. In the future, we may set a default location, but for today, it's up to you. Cursorless settings. Void word snippet. Drowse. This is the setting you're looking for, Cursorless Experimental Snippets Dir. And as you can see, I just have it mapped to a particular location where I keep various configuration files for my setup. The next thing you'll want to do is to understand the snippet format so you can write them yourself. I mentioned we have a recorder that lets you automatically create snippets to make the process much easier, but let's start just by seeing what they look like. The built-in cursorless snippets are a good place to start, and you can also have a look at my personal snippets. I'll drop a link in the description. This is the definition of the built-in if statement snippet. You can see at the top, this is the unique identifier for the snippet. Now you can either keep multiple snippets in one file or keep one per file. It's kind of up to you but the keys in this map represent snippets. The next piece to look at is the definitions. Note that a particular snippet can be active in multiple languages, and so each of these definitions will be scoped by the languages where they're active. So you can see when we're in one of these C-like languages, this is the body of the snippet. So looking here, this is, this is standard TextMate snippet syntax, which is actually the same uh, syntax which is supported by default VS Code snippets. Each line is a line of the snippet surrounded in strings, Tabs will automatically use the tabbing structure of the file that you're in, so either four spaces, two spaces, or tabs. And then things followed by a dollar are the holes of the snippet, right? So you can see an if statement has a condition and a consequence. As mentioned, this syntax is a bit cumbersome, so we do support automatically generating this. Here's how that snippet looks in Python. If condition colon tab consequence. At the end, there's various language agnostic configuration of the snippet a description which we, which we may use in the future, as well as extra information you can put about the variables. 
Let's hold off on those that extra information for now. Now let's look at how we configure the talent side so the talent knows what you want to call the snippet. Notice here there's no mention of of the fact that this should be called if. It just has an identifier, but we could call it whatever we want talent side. So that's configured like any other spoken form in your cursorless settings CSVs. Those are by default in your talent user directory. But of course, that's configurable. By default, there's a directory called cursorless settings within your talent user directory. Underneath the cursorless settings directory, we can remap the names of actions, scope types, etc. There's a subdirectory called experimental. As mentioned, the cursorless snippets are still considered experimental, even though they're fairly stable. There are actually three files related to snippets. Two of them are fairly straightforward, so let's start with those. Insertion snippets is one. This follows the standard layout of all of these CSV files where the left hand side is the spoken form and the right hand side is a cursorless internal identifier. The insertion snippet file determines what word you say after the word snippet when you're inserting a snippet. So snippet if, snippet func, etc. As you can see here, if is the spoken form for if statement, which was the key of that map. If we changed if to spaghetti, then you would say snip spaghetti. The spoken form should update automatically whenever you hit save on one of these CSVs. PopDoc wrapper, drowse. These are the wrapper spoken forms. So notice that you can have a different spoken form for inserting the snippet versus wrapping with the snippet. In this case, we still use if for wrapping, right? So this is the thing that you say before wrap when you're using the snippet to wrap. So it would be if wrap air in this case. You might ask why we don't just have one file. Well, that's because actually you can take the same snippet and use it in different ways to wrap. So for example, we have if else is a type of snippet, which is, as you guessed, an if else statement. So you can wrap something into the first part of the if statement or into the alternative. Highlight line red each and blue each. Drowse. So you can see in this case, both of these use the same snippet identifier here, if else statement. Highlight nothing. Drowse. Sorry about the tough colors there. So you can see both of them, this is the key, the name of the statement. But with else wrap, the thing you're wrapping goes into the alternative. And with if else wrap, it goes into the consequence. So let's see that in action. If else wrap this. Drowse. So notice in that case, the print statement ended up in the first part of the if statement. Nope. Push tug. Else wrap this. Drowse, whereas in this case, it ended up in the alternative. The last CSV file related to snippets is what's called insertion snippets single phrase. Uh, this is in part why we're still, we still have it in the experimental directory because that part is a bit awkward. But what that does is for certain snippets, it allows as, so as you saw with function, we could say snip func hello world, and that would automatically insert hello world into the name. And that's defined here. So you can see func function declaration dot name. This dot name indicates that if we do chain a phrase, that's where it should end up as the name. Let's have a go at using the snippet recorder to make a new snippet. In this case, let's make one called null check, which will check whether a variable is null. Pop sesh. Nope. Push, tug, drowse. So the first thing to do is to build up an example of the snippet. We'll use that as the template indicating to cursorless where the holes are. If wrap this, bring air is null, scrape, drowse. This is our template. And so we're going to want a hole to indicate that's the variable that we're null checking. And this is the body of the if statement. To do that, we select each hole in the snippet. Take whale and line pit, drowse. We have one cursor for each thing we want to be the hole in the snippet. And so now we need to make the snippet and tell cursorless what is the extent of the snippet, right? Because cursorless doesn't know whether we're trying to make a snippet out of this entire function or just out of the if statement or what. So what we do is we use the snippet make command and the target is what we want to be the full extent of the snippet. In this case, it's the if statement. Snippet make state inc. Drowse. Okay. Cursorless is now starting to make a snippet for us. Here we name it, so let's call it null check. Camel null check. Head push, drill, urge, look. Clap. Drowse. As you can see, Cursorless has actually already filled out an entire snippet for us. This snippet 
could just be used straight out of the box once we map the spoken forms. Notice that it automatically detected what language we were in so that this snippet will be active in Python. We could add additional clauses for other languages if we wanted to. Notice it's filled out these variables here and it's given them names that are not particularly interesting. So let's give them some slightly better names. Word variable. Next. Word body. Drowse. It's a bit meta, but what Cursorless has done here is actually constructed a snippet that allows us to fill out and define a snippet, okay? And so you can see I'm moving through the tab stops as I define the snippet. So there's one tab stop for each of the different variables in the snippet. Tab, drowse. Then we can define the description. That's a good idea because we're gonna use it for things like searchability later. Checks if a variable is sense. Checks if a variable is null. Tab. As mentioned, there's this extra configuration section here. Let's ignore that for now because it's not critical. Don't forget to save it. Disk. Now that we've defined the snippet body, we need to map the spoken form. So this is the unique identifier for the snippet. Let's copy that. Copy urge. Pop sesh. Drowse. Okay, we're now in the spoken forms area. So the first thing we want to do is to be able to insert the snippet. So that's going to be insertion snippets.csv. And let's make a new line at the bottom. Poor blue bat. Phrase null check. Clear blue near word null. Tail spam. Face that. Disk. We can now use this snippet for insertion. Snippet null check. Drowse. And as you can see, it inserted the snippet, left a hole for us to put the variable and for the body. So note this is super chainable, right? Because now I can just do a quick null check on a variable. Nope. Snippet null check, bring air next. Drowse. Now let's configure it for wrapping. Pop sesh. Copy line. Pop doc wrapper. Poor file, paste that. Ditch up one. Now remember, for the wrapper, we need to tell cursorless where should it put the thing that it's wrapping, right? Should it put it into the variable field that we're null checking? Probably not. Should it put it into the body? That's where we want it, right? For, for an if statement, we put it in the body. We're wrapping, the statement we're wrapping becomes the body of the null check. Point word body. Disk. Null check wrap state. And as you can see, it's wrapped this statement in a null check. So that's everything you need to know to use cursorless built-in snippets, as well as creating your own snippets. In a follow-up video, we'll look at some more advanced features, such as automatically expanding targets when you wrap them with a snippet, configuring your snippets to allow free text that's automatically formatted, and some configuration that can make snippets even faster to use. Until then, thank you so much for watching and happy coding. Record stop.